Good day, class. Good day. My name is Rapunzel Williams, and I'll be your moderator for today's class. Please silence our cell phones and all electronic devices. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to ensuring the proof and existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operations of his eternal purpose parent and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry C. Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, Jamaica, and Africa, and other foreign countries. The Omaha class cottage meeting was established in the year of 2016. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which can be contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been appropriately substituted by the Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifest in or out of physical body is Yahshua. 
it has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is a title that the Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it's a erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, or the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabets that will produce the sound that is made by the letter J. And neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after Messiah's death. So such names as Jesus and Jehovah are possible renders of the true and original name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is a pure spirit, and in this state he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn a cloud all around the edge of this chart to show that how that everything on this chart is within a cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, he took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the world of the sun, a super and corporal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. And this form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in the physical body and walk the earth plane as Joshua Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given until salvation, and we must know that name. So a simple yet intelligent question you should ask yourself is what was the name of the Savior? During the time he walked the earth plane, a further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern of the universe because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision and instructed him to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of the most holy place, the holy place, and the court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. Also in this school, we shall prove how that everything is made and operates according to this threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Our ten primary constitution aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. One, to help you find know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Two, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity and Yahshua Messiah without distinction of nationality, race, creed, caste, sex, or color. Three, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and powers laid in men. Four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures Comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern and practical course science. Five, to escapade current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation of ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating a mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of ages. Time. Time, excuse me. 8. To earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith, which was once delivered unto the sons and children of Yahweh. 9. To make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby men can be saved, that saving the name 
of Yahshua the Messiah, and 10, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of any world glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. We will start our class off this evening with the opening prayer, which will be given by Dr. Rapunzel Williams. Uh, guest acknowledgments and our scripture lesson for this evening is Revelations, the 12th chapter, and that will be read by Dr. Stephon Williams. Let us all remain seated for the opening prayer. Great day again, class. Great day. Uh, let us bow our hearts and minds to Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, Messiah. Father, we'd like to thank you once again for bringing us back to another class, to allowing us to come back for, to another class and learn more of your purpose, your pattern, your plan. Yeah. We're asking you, Father, that all the classes that are going out this evening, may they be a blessing to someone's soul today. Yes. We're asking you, Father, to open up our hearts, minds, and ears to understanding and knowing that you truly is everything. Yeah. We're asking you, Father, that... Um, uh, May this class that we're doing today, uh, this Friday, uh, may it be a blessing to someone. I'm asking you, Father, to, to uh, uh, pick out what class it is that you want them to look at to open up their 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 hearts to know of your purpose, your pattern, your plan. Mm -hmm. All these things we ask the only begotten Son, Yahshua Messiah. Let the class say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great day again, class. Great day. We have no first-time visitors or no returning visitors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can say great day to everyone. Great day. Our scriptural lesson for today's class is Revelation, the 12th chapter. And I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible contain the holy name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities with various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. That's Revelation, the 12th chapter from the Holy Name Bible. It says, And the temple of Yahweh was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the Ark of, the, of his Covenant, and there were lightnings and voices and thunders and and an earthquake and great hail. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto Yahweh and to his throne. And the woman fled unto the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of Yahweh that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought at his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now was come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Eloah and the power of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our Eloah day and night. And they overcome, and they overcame, excuse me, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. 
and they love not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the, into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of an eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood. which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wrought with the woman and, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Yahweh and have the testimony of Yahshua the Messiah. And he stood upon the sands of the sea. I just read for you Revelation, the 12th chapter from the Holy Name Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great day again, class. Great day. I would like to remind the class to please silence all cell phones and all electronic devices. It's an honor and a pleasure to call our speaker for this evening class, Dr. Stephon Williams. I'd like to say great day to everyone. Great day. Um, I'd like to say a great day to the viewing audience, especially those that are viewing this uh, class video for the very first time. Yes. We'd like to say uh, we welcome you all. This is our uh, workshop night, and um, we have entitled our workshop, which is, which is on every Friday of the month, Yahweh willing. We have entitled our workshop Transcript Fridays. And that means we'll be reading transcripts in their entirety every Friday, Yahweh willing. So this, uh, this night's uh, transcript we're going to be reading is entitled Mystery of, uh, Mystery of Iniquity, colon, Revelation 12th chapter. Once again, the name of the transcript we're going to be reading in its entirety is entitled, can you see it? Mystery of Iniquity, colon, Revelations, 12th chapter and you can find this transcript for yourself you can go to um, archetypepattern.org and read the uh, read the transcript for yourself download it or read it from your computer and this lecture was given by Dr. Henry Clipper Kenley in 1971 once again the name of the transcript is entitled mystery of iniquity colon revelations 12th chapter. All right? All right. So let's get into it. Okay. Huh? <clears throat> All right. So it says. Dr. Kimberly says, thank you ever so much. I know all of you enjoy Ethel Griggs. We want the woman around here too to know that we have some women. And we want the people to know too that this is a school, not a church. What you keep on talking about it like that for? What you what you keep on talking about it like that for? See, you come to school to learn something you don't know. Now, you couldn't learn nothing if the teacher didn't know. And just getting up here bragging and boasting around and having something to say and passing the collection plate, 
that won't help him. But you know one thing? If you pay attention to the news and you look in your newspaper, I've been trying to tell you to do that for the longest. And you'll find a group of young people and old people too. I'm not talking about Hanson. I'm talking about others. Of course, he's included in one of these groups. But now here's what I want to point out to you. They are against organized religion. They are seeking to find something basic, something fundamental, something definite, something positive or concrete. Getting away from skepticism, agnosticism, infidelity, stupidity, and colossal ignorance. We want to know something. We want to know something. We demand that you tell us if you, if you know it. Now you either do one thing or the other. You got a holy Bible here. Now you say that it is the result of Yahweh's purpose. He's revealed to man. All right, now then look, if that be the case, then we want you to prove the divine authenticity, the unerring accuracy, and the infallibility of Yahweh and his eternal purpose. And we want, and we don't want none of your imaginations and none of your hallucinations, none of your eye presuming. You get it? Did you notice the weather? The student says, yes. Did I tell you anything about it? Student body says, yes. Do you remember what I told you? Student body says, February 4th, 1962. Y'all know something about everything. Now, what did I tell you was going to happen February 4th, 1962? I told you that in 1960. The student says the planets would line up. That's right, planet conjunction. And these planets would be in in conjunction or line. Student says lined up, conjunction or lined up. That's right. You sure told us, Doc. You said it. I might get up here sometime and talk over somebody's head. I don't intend to I don't intend to or they may not understand and then they may go out and say, well, that man said, but now I want to show you about this. I don't want to I don't want to go too far on that cause. I got something else in mind. But I want to show you what I'm just give you some idea of it. I just just want to touch it, Freddie. Now we talk about this pattern all the time. And we say it comes from Yahweh. It was revealed to Moses. Yahshua Messiah told the Jews, he said, enter in at the straight gate. Now you getting up here and reading, enter in at the straight gate. Now we refer to, um, he referred to, uh, he said, now we always talking about this pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Which we built to Moses, mm -hmm. right? It's a pattern, this is the pattern here, mm -hmm. right? The tabernacle, all right? Which we built to Moses, right? right. We're talking about Sinai. Right? right? Yahweh Elohim took on cheaper form, right? Mm -hmm. Yahweh took on cheaper form of Yahweh Elohim, right? Transfigured to Moses into a threefold tangible tabernacle, right? Mm -hmm. And tell him to build one and make one exactly like it in the walls of Sinai. Is that right? right. According to Exodus um, 25th chapter, right? Mm -hmm. And then the pattern, now you go over here, it says tabernacle pattern. It's the same one that's here on this chart. Same one is here in the world of Sinai, right? And on here, at the bottom of here, it says gate, right? Mm -hmm. All right? In the uh, entering to the court round the battle, is that right? Right. It says gate, first step, right? So he says, now enter in at the straight gate, right? Mm -hmm. and, you don't, and you don't know nothing about what the gate is. And you don't know a thing about it. For, for broad is the way that leads unto destruction, and narrow is the way that leads unto life. See, just making some good reading, and you don't have no knowledge of it, the straight gate. All right? 
So he goes on to say, just like you have right here, is that right? Right. On our uh, elementary chart, on the plate that's entitled apostasy, right? Mm -hmm. You have what it says, the way, the truth, and the life. Is that right? Right. This is narrow. Is that right? Right. Everything out of this narrow way, right, mm -hmm. is wide. Is that right? Right. Which leads to destruction. What, what is he talking about, right? Right. Talking all these different denominations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 yeah, false, false religions, right? Right. Yeah, all these different sects, creeds, cults, and, 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 and so forth and so on. Is that right? Right. Christianity, Protestantism, is that right? Mm -hmm. Catholic, you know what I mean? And so forth and so on, right? Mm -hmm. That's why it leads to destruction. But what we have here is the way, the truth, and the life. It is narrow, is that right? Right. It's a narrow way that leads to eternal life or to heaven itself. All right? Okay. It says, now here's what I'm talking about. Now if you would line up these planets, and they and they would come into conjunction. Now you see, if I knew how the structure of the universe was, and I knew why it was that it was that way, if I understood it. So then now here's these vessels in here. I don't have time to go into a lot here. See, we get this all the time. Excuse me. And I want to get to something else, but now we just say these nine vessels and couched in this one here all right or surrounded or in the tent tent is concrete is that right mm -hmm. so it says these nine vessels okay right so mm -hmm. the nine vessels he's referring to is the nine vessels inside the tabernacle is that right mm -hmm. so you have the first vessel i would say it like that the altar sin sacrifice all right the brazen labor the cup of anointing oil, is that right? Right. The table of shoe bread, the seven bread lampstand, right? The altar incense, that's make six, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Going on to the, this is the court roundabout holy place. Three here, three here, make six. Now we're going to the most holy place, is that right? Okay. We have a three in one configuration of the Ark of the Covenant, and two archangels, is that right? Mm -hmm. And surrounding is like, like that tent part, is that right? Right. All right? We make that tent, makes it concrete. All right, back to Yahweh. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Same right here. Use this uh, 40 plate chart. It says Theosophy plate here, plate two, right? You have intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge, right? That's three, right? Mm -hmm. Beauty, love, and justice. That's six. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Foundation, power, strength. That's nine. Is that right? It's mm -hmm. like nine in the tabernacle pattern. Is that right? Mm -hmm. This is the this is the this is the physical to understand the spirit. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And the tenth part is that kingdom that goes around. Right? Back up to, in other words, that tenth part is, is, is um, like up to Yahweh. All right? You understand what I'm talking yes. about? Okay. Let's continue on. It says, now, you've got nine planets out there. You've got nine systems in your physical body, and it's all embodied in Yahweh. And Yahweh is spirit. All right? He's the substance. He's the source. He's the limits and the bounds. All right? So I want to just pan over here real quick. So on our chart here, which is, we, we primarily call this chart, our green chart, is that right? Right. This is all embodied, all right, in, in, in Yahweh. It says Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, the creator, image by his creation, right? Spirit, substance, source, and law, eternity, final projectiveness, limits, and bounds. Got the reading like that, right? Mm -hmm. You have here, it says... It says universe with the planets in there. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Nine planets. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Nine divine attributes. Is that right? Um, you have uh, um, nine vessels in, in, the, in the tabernacle pattern. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Man has nine systems in his physical body. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So the nine planets, the nine primary planets in the universe is Neptune, the sun, the moon. That's three, right? We have Jupiter. Mercury and Mars, that's six, right? Mm -hmm. And we have Uranus, Pluto, that's Saturn, that's mixed up nine, is that correct? Right. Then we have a man's physical body, a man's body, which is physical. We have nervous, reproductive, endo endocrine, respiratory, circulatory, excretory, digestive, 
muscular skeletal systems, that's nine, right? Mm -hmm. Nine in man, nine in the universe of planets, nine in the tabernacle pattern, and nine divine attributes, all right? The table take the form, the super, uh, uh, the, the spawn nature of Yahweh, is that right? The bodily form, is that right? Yes. All right, all in, all in case in, 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 uh, in, 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 in spirit or in Yahweh, is that right? Now, I heard her talking about a metamorphosis or a transmutation, how now somebody might not understand what them words mean. It means this, just like you read there in the first chapter of John, in the beginning was the word, right? And the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh, and the word was made flesh and dwelt the manga. Is that right? He said that's a metamorphosis. Is that right? So it says Yahweh. In the beginning was the word, right? Mm -hmm. And the word was with Yahweh. And, and the word was Yahweh, right? Mm -hmm. and then it goes on to say the 14th verse that Yahweh was manifested in the flesh. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? See? That's a metamorphosis. Okay? Mm -hmm. It says... <clears throat> That's a metamorphosis, transmutation, a change. Somebody said, well, I thought Yahweh didn't change. He doesn't. The manifestation does, but the principle remains the same. It always does. Well, we say you have it there in the 17th chapter of Acts. It says we are the offspring. Look at it and read it. See if it's in there. For in him we live and move and have our beings. As some of your own poets have said, as some of your own poets or prophets have said, for we are also his offspring. So that's what the, the word over here on our green chart, philoprogentiveness, progentiveness, means the love for one's offspring, all right? So it says, we are also his offspring, that is to say, we sprung off of, we sprung off from the spirit or from Yahweh. Now where he's now where his offspring now we now we are his offspring and we live in him and we move in him and we have our being. Then as so far as matter is concerned, we ought to look something like him. That's the way he he felt about it in Genesis one and twenty six. Said he does, said he made man in his in his likeness in, in in his own image. Is that right? That's Is that right. right? That's right. So just like you back to this plate right here, I mean back 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 to this chart here, where it says man made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of tabernacle, right? Mm -hmm. Tabernacle pattern, tabernacle of man, man by the pattern. Is that right? right. And on here, it has Chapter and verse Genesis 1 26 and Genesis 2 and 7. All right, that'll be from the, from the uh, Holy Name Bible. You can read it the same, same, uh, it's a little different in the King James uh, Force where the actual uh, verse is, but it's in Genesis 1 and 26, Holy Name Bible, Genesis 2 and 7. All right, right here, it says. <clears throat> You know the thing is so simple. There's where you make all your blunders. That's why you know the thing is simple. There's where you make all your blunders. That's why you can't learn nothing cause it's standing right under your nose all the time. And you go around looking for this and all up in the sky and so forth and so on. Why not try and find him in you? Should I go? Mm -hmm. Kind of, kind of check up on yourself. See, you say that it says Jesus. It says it. We know truly is Joshua. You say that Joshua was baptized at the age of thirty and walked around the face of the earth, teaching and preaching. Um, it says three and a half years, right? In is that is that almost right? Student body says right. And we've seen that he was thirty-three years old. That was from birth to death. Now, somebody say, how you know? You wasn't back there. Ain't, ain't no man ever seen Yahweh in no time. All right, now, here you got 30, 
three vertebrae in your spinal column. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So right over here, back to this chart here. <coughs> we have 33, uh, uh, 33 vertebrae, right, in our spinal, spinal column. Is that right? Right. Same, same over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. See? What is that for? I'm about to explain it, see? He says, all right. Now you have 33 vertebrae in your spinal column, and with those bones, you're, you're able to walk erect. Isn't that right? And your muscles, bones and muscles. Now then you count them 33 vertebrae in your spinal column, and that tells you how long he walked around here, and that's why you got them there. Ain't that something? <laughs> Somebody said, well, look, I don't know about that well. Now let me point out some, something else to you. Whether you know it or not, everybody in here has 33. Don't make no difference whether you're male or female. Now, of course, if you just happen not to have one of them, then you're excused from our argument. But you go and ask an orthopedic specialist, or here's a medical doctor over here, ask him. Is that almost right, Doc? Dr. Harris said, that's correct, right. You're carrying the evidence right around you, right around your own self. You are what you're, you are what you're looking for. <laughs> Matter is spirit materialized. You're the offspring. You come from that and you must go back to where you come from. It's wonderful. Now look, the reason why I got up here tonight, I didn't get to first base last Friday night. Casey struck out at the back that time, I mean on what I wanted to get into. I don't mean to say that there was something wrong with, with what I tried to tell you. That's not, that's not the point. What I told you was all right, but I wanted to go back to the root and dig and come on down. That's what I wanted to do. Now I had Dr. Tranium to read the fifth chapter of Galatians. Now, I don't know whether you know it or pay any attention to it or not. He read it Sunday. Now, all of Christian doom is doing just contrary to what he just read. And they all got the same kind of Bible, read one thing and do something else. They got all that same Bible. Oh, it's a mess. It ain't too much wrong with this book. Oh, yes, I know there's mistranslations and interpolation in that in that book. Somebody say, you mean to tell me it's some in the Holy Name Bible? Sure. And all the rest of them. But I tell you one thing. We can pick them up, no trouble. Oh, I tell you, it's wonderful. Now, did you notice how Sister Ethel went along with that? You know how she went along with that? Now, she knew exactly what she was talking about every step of the way. She had a profound knowledge of what she was talking about. She understood the structure. Let me put it your way that you've heard it all your life. It's other other upon of nature, the structure of the universe. She understood the dispensation and ages. She didn't mix them all up and, and churn up all churn them all up like Jehovah's Witnesses and a bunch of other idiots do. That's right. That's the reason why you can't get nothing straight. Now, I want you to read just a portion, though. I better go on down here and get this thing right. I ain't going to be satisfied until I go back and get it. The 12th chapter of Revelations. I just not going to be satisfied until I do what I want to do. Now the word revelations or to or to reveal a thing, if I put my hand in my pocket and I show you what I had or reveal to you what I had in my pocket, showed you what I had. Now if I don't have something in there, I can't show you nothing. Now look here, this chart here. Now the way that it is put together now you pay attention to what I'm saying to you. See then, this takes in Yahweh and the universe in its totality. Don't leave out nothing. Somebody said, well, I don't know. I don't agree. I don't know about that. What I do, yeah, I know about it. 
Ain't never been nobody, this work is 40 years old. Ain't never been nobody from nowhere, no college, no denomination, no sect, no cult, no doctor, no lawyer. Ain't been nobody here that's able to refute what's on these charts. But I tell you what some of them have said, the smart boys. They have gotten up and said, this, this many of them said, now look, you can't fix that. They tell you the same thing about it, about it I do. Now you notice this one, this is the old one back here. Now this is a bed sheet, see, and this is the first chart like this. Now, quite naturally, he's referring to this elementary chart. And the first one that was, uh, that he uh, drawn out, what, what y'all had shown him, right, mm -hmm. was actually on the bed sheet. That bed sheet is uh, kept in the, in the, what they call a headquarters in Los Angeles, California, right? But he referred to the first chart that was ever uh, painted. Well, this one called an elementary chart, uh, primarily. It also was called the chart or pattern or plan of salvation, all right? That's what he referred to, okay? He said, we had a little small one, see about this big one, uh, see about this big one time, and this is really the second. But this is the first one that we made. And this bed sheet with this paint on it is about 39 years old. Now you haven't been down to Sears or the Broadway and got no sheets that last as long as this one. And we rolled it up and down. We rolled it up and down for many years. Now this is the first one. I didn't have no other. I didn't have the rest of them. We just tried to. Now I was thinking within myself, here's the way I thought it. Now if I can show them from the Garden of Eden on down, they'll catch all the rest of it. If I show them what the pattern is and how to use it, why then they'll catch it. They should, I thought. Now come to find out they couldn't, so then I had to go and make this one. So then I had this one and this one drawn together. Now this one shows from start to finish, don't leave out nothing. Now then you got two things here. Well, well, it really isn't two things. You got two in business. Now we want you to know both of them. We want you to know Yahshua, the Messiah, manifested in the flesh. And we also want you to know the devil or Judas. We want you to know what you call the Messiah and the anti-Messiah. Did you notice that I told you that there was nine different vessels in here? Now the apostle, now the apostles say there's nine different gifts. The gift of prophecy, the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of interpretation, and so forth and so on. All right now, and one of them in particular I want to mention before I before I get off, and that's discerning. That's a gift, discerning. And so, um, just wanted to just, uh, just, just uh, pause for a minute. Now, he said the elementary chart was the first one that was painted right. Right. Then the second one he referred to is our 40 plate chart because it says series number two here. Okay. You see, I, you see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Um, another one says series one, I believe. But this is this what he referred to right here. Okay. Okay. Well, not mistaken. What's the series one here? The series two. I believe this is the second one that was well, that was drawn. out was the forty page chart. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I, I, I can stand for correction, but I believe this is the second one in the draw. But he was mentioning two two charts, right? Right. He said he couldn't get it on this one, so he had another one drawn up. That's one. Bring that out, okay? Right. It says now. <clears throat> In the first chapter, now in the first chapter of John, now listen at what I'm talking about. Now Yahweh, when he made the man, listen close now, he gave him a sufficient amount of intelligence to comprehend his purpose and to understand his purpose. John put, puts it this way in the first chapter of John there. He says he enlightened every man that comes to, into the world. Now I, just, now, I just employ and use different words. Now, if he didn't 
if he if he hadn't did that, then the old anti Messiah come along, he fool you. But if he give you the capacity of intelligence to use and you don't use it, that's not his fault. And therefore, since he gave it to you and you don't use it, then he is justified in sending you to the lake. See how you go? Mm -hmm. See how you go? He gave you that knowledge and intelligence and he and he sent somebody along and where and where we're having all your troubles and all and, and our problem is nowhere else. We ain't having problems nowhere else, but discerning is one of them. He said, but discerning, it's one of them satanic. Whether it's divine spirit or satanic. Now, the right spirit that looks like it's wrong and the wrong spirit looks like it's right. In other words, you just got your wires crossed. Now, the 12th chapter of Revelations, I want you to read. And the temple of Yahweh was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his covenant. Now look, John is out on the Isle of Patmos. So he said, John is out on the Isle of Patmos. You see right here the total expression, John is the Patmos, the agency. Is that right? Right. Now look, John is out on the Isle of Patmos, and he's out on the Isle of Patmos. What, uh, what for? It tells you in the first chapter what he was out there for, and he was old, excuse me, and he was told, get this now to you know it's so great. And I don't like to tell you something without proving it. See, if it don't say that, Doc, so you can't cut out calling John a liar. A lot of smart men have read Revelations, supposed to be smart and intelligent men, Christian leaders, and they won't fool with it. The book of Revelations. You know why? He thinks, well, as smart as I am, if I don't know, then there ain't nobody else don't know. And it's the most simplest book there is in the Bible. Now, here's why I'm saying this to you. Moses wrote the first five books and the prophets wrote the prophecy, Yahshua and Messiah coming fulfilled, what they wrote. Now then, you take a man, John has to to go live. Can't kill him, and it ain't a thing you can do about it, and he got to live to be out on the Isla Patmos in AD 96 to, to, to verify and to confirm this that's back here. So in other words, John was placed here to confirm what took place back here, meaning Moses' vision, right? Mm -hmm. The city at the same altitude, Right? right, or the same elevation state, is that right? right. Elevating the spirit, all right? It says, and therefore you say Moses wrote, now John was told, you got it right there in, in the first chapter, Revelation 1 and 19. Write the things which thou hast seen. Now you write the things which you see, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. And the things which shall be hereafter said, write it. He's out, he's out there to write. And then he said to write what you see and hear. Is, is that a fact? Mm -hmm. Now here's, he is seeing a vision out here, just like I told you I had one. And I can't tell you nothing about it. And here I come, I'm, I'm all twisted up with what Moses said. And I'm all twisted up with John said, and I've got my carnal mind in it. Now, if the vision that I had is any different than what Moses and John had it, had it, it ain't worth a tinker's damn. No, I didn't mean so soft pedal it. I meant just what I said. It's a destruction to you to believe my lies. But I want to tell you what the problem is and the reason why you can't see my stuff now you can go on back. I just wanna, I just want to let you know what that Moses was writing, and John was writing what he saw and heard. All right, now the twelfth chapter of Revelations. 
and the temple of Yahweh was open in heaven. Now here, now he's seeing this vision, and he said the temple of Yahweh was open in heaven. He's seeing the vision. And he said, now the temple of Yahweh was open in heaven. All right. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his covenant. And there was seen in his temple the ark of the covenant. Now wait a minute. Now just reading that, and you don't know nothing about the ark of the covenant, that ain't going to help you, Buster. This is the ark of the covenant. The dimensions and all is right down there in Exodus. You just getting up here reading um, don't mean nothing, all right? So it'll be referring to right here. This right here is the Ark of the Covenant, all right? <clears throat> he says, and there was and there was lightnings and and voices and thunderings and and, and, and an earthquake and great hail and there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Listen, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Is that what it says? A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And the moon under her feet. Christian doom ain't never got that thing straight. Now, look, I'll tell you why. Now, here's Adam back here. He's the sun. Moses is up here in this scene, the vision up here in the top of this mountain in the cloud, just like this is a mountain or an island surrounded. This is a mountain in the water. And he's looking right back at it. He said there appeared a one in heaven. And he's and he has to now look now catch it. Catch it. John is on the Isla of Patmos, which is surrounded. Is an island is a land surrounded by water. Now then Moses in his description in the beginning of this they just got, they, they just both got to match. In other words, like I told you about that, of balancing the liabilities and assets, and you make a, you make a mistake there. It's not going to balance. So now we can't make no mistakes with this. So now here John is, now, so now here John is seeing this woman clothed with the sun. Is that what you just read? Right? Right. He said, now, he looking right he looking right at this man. The woman is right in the man. The fifth chapter of Genesis said, Yahweh calleth thee sleep to fall upon Adam, said it's not good for man to be alone, called a thee sleep to fall upon him. Now we got that all upon now we got all that upon the wall there, and he reached within the side of Adam and he took that rib and he also took the womb, the man had both of them. In other words, he was male and female united. He was male and female united in, into one body. So I'm told it right there and just give a pictorial illustration. So we understand in Moses' vision, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, let me go right here. Let me see that find on this one here. No, this chart. We understand. We understand. The user said degeneration in the first Adam, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So we understand first Adam referring to Adam, right? Right. Then we understand regeneration is the second Adam, Yahshua, Messiah from heaven, right? Right. So Adam, the first Adam, was a type of Yahshua Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, so we understand. We understand, um, you don't see it, I'm going to go down here. On the, it says division between male and female, right? Mm -hmm. Plate one. I mean, plate 12. So we understand that, um, that Eve was inside of Adam, right? right. Just as Father says, and he called their name Adam. Is that right? Mm -hmm. While Eve was inside of Adam, right? So that means that the woman was clothed in the sun, right? Right. Adam was, was a type of the son of Yahweh, Elohim, is that right? right? So the one was taken out of the son, is that right? Mm -hmm. All right? Or the bride was taken out of her husband, is that right? right? So now, let me come over here. All right? 
So the woman, you've got Adam and Eve, well, that's just, just the part when now they, they're, the woman is not clothed in the sun any longer, right? Right. They're both coming out. So now you see the sun is coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Do you see the sun? But the woman was pulled back within the sun. You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Goes on up. And you have right here these plates. The woman. See how that? Mm -hmm. Talk about revelation. Clothed back in the sun. See how it go? Woman clothed back in the sun. See how it go? And so forth and so on. Is that right? Right. So we are that spiritual woman, right? Right. Clothed back within the sun. Clothed, clothed back in our husband, which is Yahweh Messiah. See how it go? You see how it go? Mm -hmm. Sealed. All right. Okay. It says somebody say, I don't believe that. All right. Now, when you go back and look at the name, Yah is masculine. Way is feminine. Elohim is plural. See. You can go right here. So he says, Yah, Yah is masculine. Way is feminine. Right. Mm -hmm. So for, for for so for us to pronounce uh, Yahweh, we have to insert vowels. Right, A from Adam, who makes the, the masculine portion of Yahweh mm -hmm. name, right? And E from E, who makes up the uh, feminine portion of Yahweh's name, right? Mm -hmm. So Yahweh, Adam, Eve, male, female, showing that Yahweh is masculine and feminine within itself. Is that right? Mm -hmm. In principle, see how I go? All right? Mm -hmm. It says, Elohim is plural. Say, Phil, we, we know what we're talking about every step of the way. He called that deep sleep to fall on that woman, on that man, and, and, and took that, that woman out of him. Why, he could have reached down in, in the mud and made a woman just like, just as well as he uh, could a man. Mm hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, Why he could have reached down in the mud and made a woman just like as well he could he could as he could as he could a man, but he don't do it that way. Why? Because he's trying to manifest himself in earth. So therefore he's masculine and feminine. So he's gonna make a man and he's gonna make him antro it says antro uh, uh anthropomorphodite and the woman right in him. See how I go? Mm -hmm. And then he's going to cause a deep sleep to fall upon the man and take the woman out. And this vision he's having is up, up on, up on in the spirit or in the heavenly realm. He said, it's a wonderful thing, a wonder. Then appeared a, a wonder, a woman clothed. A woman is clothed with the sun. That to say she is in him. See how I go? Mm -hmm. Not after the sun. The woman is clothed with the sun. Now you got a S O N and you got a S U N and this is the moon and then the moon is under her feet and a crown of stars above her head. Oh boy, that boy was looking in there, wasn't he? That boy sure was looking in. All right, read on. And she been with child cried. And she uh, been with child cried. Now look, here's the man. He's praying with the woman. And the woman is in the man, and she's pregnant. And the moon under her feet. The moon rules the night. I've got something, folks. I've got something, I'm, and I'm going to bring it out too. I want to do it the other night, but I but I'm going to take the shortcut tonight. I'm going to show you what's the matter. Why you can't learn nothing. All right, read on. Travailing, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another woman in heaven. And now there appeared another one. Another, uh, now there appeared another. Now here come up another wonder. Behold a great red dragon. Having seven heads and ten horns. Having seven heads. Say listen don't you know there's seven days in a week. There's seven months in a month in a monthly cycle. There's seven years in a cycle of years. There are seven weeks in a cycle of weeks, and seven millenniums in a cycle of millenniums, and it's seven ages in, in a cycle of ages, and we know what's going on in every one of them. Now, here's another wonder. All right, read on. The great red dragon had seven heads, ten horns, and a crown upon his head, mm -hmm. 
and his tail drew the third part of the stars from heaven and did cast them to the earth and did cast them to the earth. I'll tell you this one real quick because it's almost off on a tangent and I couldn't reach it to save my life tonight, but I'll just give it, give it, uh, but I'll just give you a little of it. When Yahshua went into the palace, went into Palestine in the, in the conquest of, of Canaan's land, you remember Ishmael had 12 sons too. Just like Jacob had 12 sons and they were in, and they were the Canaanites and you can call them, uh, uh, Yeshuaites and uh, Tishabites and Moabites and so forth and so on. Now they were in that land. So we refer to right here. We got one the chart here. They were in that land, meaning Canaan's land. Okay. They had never been out of it. They were born there, and that's and that's part of where you're getting your squabble right now, cause they can't settle over there in that land. So now here's what I want to show you. When Yahshua went in there in the conquest of, of Palestine or Canaan's land, he drove out those Canaanites, but he left eight of the 12, left eight of the 12 tribes in there. He couldn't put them out. And they had an inheritance in there too. Now, if you went on back into heaven now and compare that qualifying, which is in type, in type, and then it's 12 of them there, and he drove out and left eight, and you'll find that in Judges, left eight nations in there. Then you look back over here in Revelation where you've seen where Satan is cast out of heaven and his tail drew the third part of the stars from heaven. Three times eight is almost 24. Did, did, you, get, did, did you get that one? All right. I'm going to start right here. I'm going to show you something. Just, just draw this out real quick here. So, uh, we're going to stand up with Revelation 12. We read for our scripture lesson, right? Mm -hmm. It said that that, 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 that that dragon, his story or his lie, right? Or his right. tail, meaning T A L E, right? Mm -hmm. Jew a, a third of the stars of heaven, right? right. So, I want to just uh, do something to draw this real quick here. Just go like this. I put angels like that, right? Then I go like this. Okay. All right. Can you see that? Yes. This is like the, this. 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 Say this. This is the. This is the whole. This is like all the angels, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Satan, we need to understand what he did, his his lie or his tail, same same thing, drew, right? Mm -hmm. Third part of the whole, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to just say it's 24, right? Right. All right. So I take away a third. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So I go. I take away a third. So I go. Mm -hmm. In other words, the angels are in is is an innumerable company, meaning, meaning it's in it's it's a number that no man can count. That's how many it is, right? You can't even count a man can't count that number. See how I go? That's how many it is, right? Mm -hmm. And in the third in the third that he drew, that's it. That's innumerable, right? Mm -hmm. And what was left, that's innumerable. See how I go? Mm -hmm. You got me, man. Yahweh knows the number, but man don't know it. You see how I go? You see how I go? Mm -hmm. You see how I go? Yes. So those angels that he drew, that's that's the innumerable company of angels which are down here on the earth plane, posing as ministers of light, mm -hmm. right? As these imams and bishops and pastors and preachers and, and deacons and you know and popes and so forth and so on. See how I go? Mm -hmm. Those little satanic spirits that was that was uh, uh, that the say that was cast out of heaven, right? And that story that his tail drew. Mm -hmm. You got this numeral company, so then you can go to um, in type how he how he said that. Um, remember, he told Abraham that the seed is going to be the seed is going to be going to have the seed 
uh, come down here, right? There's mm -hmm. a land they know not of, right? Right. And being even being treated with 400 years, right? And he said that in this sea is going to multiply as the sands of the sea, right? Mm -hmm. Remember right. the stars of heaven, is that right? Mm -hmm. That that's a numerable that's a numerable company. I mean that's a numerable, uh, innumerable. In other words, you can't number. Right. You got you can't number the, you take each grain of sand. Mm -hmm. You can't number all that mm -hmm. across the world, right? Mm -hmm. You take a cup, could you number that, right? Yeah. Can't number the stars, right? Right. You saw how I go. Then also in uh, uh, Hebrews twelve, right? Mm -hmm. It tells you about um uh, we are we, we are a, a, a compassed about with so many clouds of witnesses, right? Mm -hmm. By a numerable company of angels. See how I go? Mm -hmm. You see how I go? All right. So that so that so that third part of the stars of heaven is a, a numerable company. You got me of satanic spirits. You see how I go? Mm -hmm. All right. He said, now did you get that one? Is it anybody didn't get that? A whole lot of them. See, ain't it? Now those are satanic spirits that's cast out. See how I go? Mm -hmm. And this old dragon, you got, you gonna read that old serpent now. You gonna you gonna find out who he is. I don't have to tell you about that. Read. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was was which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, did you ever think about Mary's pregnancy and how Hera tried to destroy right tried to destroy her? It's all tied up in there, but I just ain't going but I just ain't got time to go into all that. All right, read on. Just keep on down. Yes, keep on down. And there's war in heaven. Michael and his angels. Now wait a minute, hold it. Now, if there's a war in heaven now, there's no way for you to get way up in the sky and you got and you got so some of you got heaven way up in the sky of course it ain't it ain't like that now he, he, now if there's a war up there in heaven now how you going to get it fixed if you got a war down here on earth all right read on michael and the angels fought against the dragon michael and the angel fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against his angels all right and prevailed not and neither was their place found even more in heaven. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and neither was their place found even more in heaven. Now wait a minute. Now Jehovah's Witnesses said over the over here in the first chapter of Job, I believe it is, that Satan run backward and forth in heaven. Yeah, that's it. You know, he run backward and forth in heaven. Did you did you get that statement? And neither was their place found any more. Their place wasn't found anymore. Look, look in some books. We're preaching the gospel, all right, read. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Wait a minute, look up here, that old serpent. Now look, Doc, uh, someone else, let him hold his place there, but someone else read it. Uh, now he's referring to Genesis 3, right, when Moses seen his vision, right, the transgression, right, Moses seen his vision, you come over here, right, the transgression plate here. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Shall I go? Now we see a satanic spear. Shall I go? Mm -hmm. Well, that serpent, shall I serpent? See that serpent there? Serpent, see I go? Yes. This is John's, I mean, in Moses, saying mm -hmm. serpent. Same as John is in the business saying serpent, right? Mm -hmm. With a dragon, same one. He's just transformed, right? Shall I go? Yes. He said, now, that old serpent, wait a minute. Now that now the serpent was. I didn't say nothing to you. I didn't tell you what to read. Laughter. <laughs> he said, "Ha ha." See this, these people in this class, they are sharp. See, I didn't, I didn't. Did you hear me say anything to him? I said, "Read," and he got it right away. Well, go and read it. Third chapter of Genesis. Now the serpent was more subtle than, in, than any beast of the field, which Yahweh had made. What Yahweh had made. Now listen, let me plug this one in to this one over here. Now that old serpent which was cast out of heaven, he was more subtle than any beast or the natural ones on earth that Yahweh had made, satanic spirit. You couldn't see him only, only in a vision. Now he approached the woman back there in the Garden of Eden. See how I go? Mm -hmm. 
Now you got that old serpent we're talking about. Now John is seeing him cast out. He's seeing him stand before the woman to devour her child as soon as it was born. And you, and, and all you got, you just, but repetition all the way down, all right now, what happened, Roger? And he said, the woman, hath, hath Elohim said, you should not eat of every tree of the garden. Now listen, he's asking that woman. She heard what Yahweh said to him. He heard it. Now he's asking her if that's what he said. All right, read. The woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree. So that's what's taking place here. See how it go? This is Moses seeing his vision. He's seeing what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. And he was having a vision. See how it go? Mm -hmm. It says, um, <clears throat> He said, but, but, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, mm -hmm. Elohim has said, you shall not eat of it, mm -hmm. neither shall you touch it, lest you die, lest you die. Now, you mustn't eat of that tree in the midst of the garden, lest you die. The woman's telling him that, and he heard, he knows what Yahweh said. Mm -hmm. Just like I tell you, any devil can come along and read this Bible, maybe beat you reading it. But that don't mean he knows anything about it. But now Satan heard what Yahweh said back here in that garden. All right, read. And the serpent said unto the woman. And now this is what the serpent said unto the woman. She told him now. And now the serpent, he said unto the woman, No death will you die. No, no death will you die, or you shall not die. Now, he just called Yahweh a liar. Now, Yahweh said, don't touch it, don't, don't eat of it, don't bother it, don't touch it, don't eat of it, lest she die. The devil said, you won't surely die. All right, now, I want you to get the 16th chapter of Matthew. From that time forward, he said, begin Yahshua to show unto his disciples. Now, here... He is with the disciples. Now, he's got to fulfill all this that's back here. In the scriptures, in the law, in the prophets, pay attention now. He's got to fulfill it because Adam did eat of the fruit of the tree, and he, and he did die. Satan said, no death will you die. And look, I mean he died instantaneously. Somebody said, well, how in the world he lived 930 years then? And he had some sons and daughters too. Then somebody run up here and say, where did Cain get his wife? I tell you, it's terrible, ain't it? Now, from that time forward, read on. Begin Yahshua to, sh to show unto a disciple. Now, Yahshua, he's going to have to fill all of this. Adam died, this one back there, and they sin in the garden. Now, he, now he's going to have to die to restore this one back. Right. So from that time forward, he began to show unto his disciples in order to fulfill this back here in the scriptures and make the devil out of a lie. From that time forward, he began to show his disciples how that he must go, up, go into Jerusalem and serve many things of the elders and chief priests, of the scribes, of the scribes of the Pharisees, read on, and be raised, and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him. Now you, now, now you, now here you are. See this man in whom you say the Messiah didn't, you say that the Messiah didn't have no better sense than to build his church on. That's what you said. At least that's what the Catholic told him, told me. Excuse me. So this man Peter, now it's time. It's now it's time. Peter, now it's right in the same. Sixteen eighteen. Two is right where it is. Now, from that time forward, he's going to have to fulfill it. He he began to show it to his disciples. That's what he was going to have to do. And he looked at them and he began to tell them all, tell them about how he must go to Jerusalem and how he must suffer and die and so forth and so on. And then Peter said, "Read on." Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Be it far from thee, Rabbi. Wait a minute. You still got your finger on third chapter of Genesis? Mm-hmm. Then Peter did what? Began to rebuke him. Be it far from thee, Rabbi. Mm-hmm. This shall 
not be unto thee. Mm -hmm. Read on. Listen. Then he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Oh, he said, uh-oh. See, that old devil was cast out of heaven. Went on down through the Garden of Eden and come on down through the devastation ages. You see him now employ the self-same words, put them together, put them together, both of them. And the serpent said to the woman, no death will you die. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke, rebuke him, saying, That's right, this shall, this shall no be unto thee. You won't, you won't die. Well, what do you think that was in Pete? You, you ought to be able to make that one out. You see through what I'm talking about, which means he ain't built no church on no flesh and blood. You got to do something better than that. And this rock that he was talking about, that wasn't Peter. The book said it wasn't too. Yes, sir. And that rock, 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians, that rock that followed them was the Messiah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So it said that rock that followed them, I mean, that rock that led them truly, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That Israelite that led the, the children of Israel out of Egypt was that rock was Yahshua Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. Back there with the children of Israel, Yahshua, the son of Nun. Is that right? Mm -hmm. All right. It says. <clears throat> And he said, upon this rock. Now you're trying to tell me that upon Peter or upon that rock, same thing in John 2 and 19. He said, destroy this temple and I'll build it again in three days. They said, our father was 40 and 6 years in building this temple. Now how are you going to rear it, it up again in three days? But John expounded, and expounded or explained. But this spake he of the temple of his body. Now he was talking about destroying this temple. They thought he was, he was talking about that temple. He said upon this rock, and they said that rock, you know what I mean, meaning upon himself, right? right. Not that rock, but him, this rock, right? Mm -hmm. Yahweh told him not to eat and not to touch. Is that what you read? I want to know, is that what you read? The reader said, right, right. Now he fulfilled it. Now we want to go down in, in Colossians second chapter. Now I want these same words back, the apostle. I want to show you the same devil standing up there in the pulpit. So second chapter of Colossians said, let no man beguile you. Let no man beguile you. Where, where are you reading? Colossians 2 and 18. Colossians 2 and 18. Now I want to, now I want to, I want to know where you're reading it, all right? Let no man beguile you. Now listen. Listen, Williams, don't let, don't you let no man beguile you or your reward in, in a voluntary humility. In a voluntary humility. Look, folks, I tell you. Will y'all come to Christ? <laughs> you say, lying, deceitful bastards. Well, what you say that for? A bastard. Twelve chapter of Hebrews tell you what it is. Now, if you can't be chastised, Yahweh chastises every son whom he receiveth. But if you be without chastisement, then you're a bastard. Now, you can't take this book and chastise nobody from it. Why? Because he knows. He thinks he, he thinks he knows all about it. Now, the point that I'm pointing out now, and I want, and, I, and what we're talking about. Let no man beguile you of your reward. Read. In a voluntary humility. In voluntary, be humble. Just so humble. The precious blood of Jesus. Transubstantiation. <laughs> talking about these preachers in, these, in Christianity, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Protestantism and Catholicism and so forth and so on, right? Says, uh, in voluntary, be humble. Just so humble. The precious blood of Jesus transubstantiation through his praying through his prayer he's transubstantiation creating creating messiah right before your eyes one of them jan janice and marie stunts right mm -hmm. meaning one of them magicians one of them hocus pocus right, right, right. And what they doing right right every, right every week right and he's telling you he's transubstantiation it into the actual body and blood of yah's messiah through his prayer right 
Protestants, Protestants, he said no, consubstantiation. Now, now, he says it's a type and a shadow. Both of them are wrong. See. Right. Now, now let's see whether that's what he actually did. I don't have time to go into it. In the sixth chapter of Son John, he said to them in the synagogue at Capernaum, listen to what I'm saying now because we, we want to get right back to this. So unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you shall, you shall have no life in you. They said this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? How can this man give us his, his flesh to eat? Are you talking about cannibalism? See how it goes? <laughs> and many of his disciples turned and went away from him. And he looked at the twelve. He said, Will you go, will you go also? And they said, We don't have nowhere to go, saying you have the words of eternal life. He explained to him, he explained to him, what did he say? The flesh profits nothing. Now if you ate him up, I mean ate his body up, and it wouldn't help him a bit, said the flesh profits in nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. When we're up here speaking, the Holy Spirit is speaking through us. We're feeding you of that bread, that spirit, that's life. No, you're carnal minded, and you let the devil stand up here and tell you he's creating Yahweh in, in communion, or creating God, <laughs> what they say, right, in communion, right? That's something. Now, when he got down to it that night in the 26th chapter of Matthew, he said, this is my body. See, they understood then because he done explained it to them. Wasn't the argument then. Now, here comes the devil. We, we got the same thing. You remember now, don't you lose. Now, don't you lose the continuity of thought. Now, he told them back there in the Garden of Eden, here he is back here and it's over there on the it's down there on the he told that man don't eat if you do you'll surely die double said no death will you die now that was natural food to, to sustain his physical body he had a physical body the trees were put in that garden in that in in the garden for uh there for him to eat physical food to sustain and nourish his physical body and that body that he had is a physical this one here is an incorporeal you don't feed that one on nothing like that right and if we preach to you the concept the comprehension the understanding the formation the profound knowledge the understanding the intelligence the wisdom and knowledge of course the natural and the Spiritual is revealed. And we have some and we have sis enough to divide them to divide between them in the in the, in the dispensation and ages. And no bass is gonna come along and tell me that this is the body and blood of the Messiah <laughs> that stood up here and created the Messiah. See that's that's the devil. The Protestant do it too, see. All right now, Paul said, now let's get on down. I don't have but a few minutes. And truly into those things which he has not seen. And truly into those things which he has not seen, he ain't understood a thing about it. How about it? Read on. Vainly puffed up in his fleshly mind. Vainly puffed up in his carnal mind. He don't have no spiritual mind. And when you speak a carnal mind, all he can see is natural things. Read on. And not holding... And, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together that's right increase it with the increase of Elohim all right read on wherefore if ye be dead with the Messiah wherefore if ye be dead with him from the rudiments of the world why as though living in the world now look at here what are you doing that for? Now wait, now just a minute. Look up here at me, Williams. See, he come in and fulfilled. All this was natural, just natural carnal ordinances, and just as natural as it was back here in the Garden of Eden, and that's what Sister told you there a while ago. Educated. With your, with your uh, educated with it educated you with the with the natural, and so it would point to the spiritual. Now, 
Here he comes in as a natural man and he was nailed to the cross. That cast it out. Now, we're no more in the generation of Adam. That's, that's the 63rd and the last. Somebody say, well, I don't believe it. Did somebody count the nerves as they going down and you have, you don't have but 36, but you don't have, but you don't have but 63. You don't have no more. Wait just a minute. Now they nail it to the cross and then over in this dispensation, we giving you the spiritual thing that this pointed to. See? So they said, now on this side of the cross, we're giving you the spiritual thing, right? Mm -hmm. What the natural, is that right? Mm -hmm. Pointed to. See how you go. All right. But you couldn't come over and you're hanging on out there in the Baptist and the Methodist and the Roman Catholic and everything said Jesus <laughs> said what to do this. Jesus said as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we show forth his death and suffering until he come. Ain't that what they said? He didn't say he didn't say that to you. That's what was said under the dispensation of the law. See, that was said under the dispensation of the law, see, in the third age, post moving age, right? But it has been fulfilled. See, I said, the Old Testament or the law has been fulfilled by the act right here, right? Mm -hmm. Converted this into a spiritual reality, right? Right? Right. All right? He didn't say that to you. That was under that, that was said under the dispensation of the law before he died and to the Jews only, see, and he told them that that's the last time. I'm going to get it with you. I'm going to get it with you. Here's how Yahweh makes a fool out of the devil. Now then after that, the death, burial, and resurrection went right back up there to him. Thomas wasn't there. I don't have time to go into all of it. He said, you do this until I come again. He's right back up in there, and now the devil's trying to make on like he's still dead. See how it go? Mm -hmm. And if he's still dead, your faith is in vain, and you're yet in your sins. You don't know how to divide the difference between these dispensations, right? So he said, you and I divide the difference between the dispensations, right? Was valid in one age, not valid in, the, in another age. You see how right. it go? He says, uh, "You don't know how to divide the. You don't know how. You don't know how to divide the difference between the dispensations. See now, we're catching this sly old devil that's cast out of heaven. Remember, he's the serpent and he's the anti messiah. Yahweh said, "You'll die." He said, "No, you won't." All right, read on, Doc. Touch not. Now wait a minute. Now you read your verse over there in Genesis. What he what he told that woman not to do in there. And the woman said to the serpent, we may either the tree or the fruit of the garden, but the truth of the, of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Elohim has said, you should not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. That's right, that's natural. And that was a tree. Now the tree is pleasant to the eyes, just like all the rest of them. Now here's what's wrong. He told them not to touch it, and then told him if he did touch it, he would die. The devil said, you won't die. Now here he's moved this out of the way, this natural out of the way. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to show it to you. If you look around, you see what I'm talking about. Now here he is up here saying, Yahshua said, Matthew 26. Yahshua said, often as you eat. Paul said, they're nailed to the cross, right? Paul said the natural cardinal orders are nailed to the cross, right? Mm -hmm. Toilet fish right, right here. It says nailed to the cross, all right? Paul said they're nailed to the cross, the cardinal orders. He said, don't touch it, don't eat it. If you do, you'll perish. He's up here calling himself your pastor. See how you go? Saying, take eat. Where do you where, where do you get the authority? See, Joshua says, for where do you where do you find that at? Matthew 26, 26. The natural is done, the natural is done, been nailed to the cross. Now we're walking not in this physical man Adam back here. See how I go? Mm -hmm. So we're not walking in this physical Adam back here. See how I go? But in but in the but in the Adam, the first Adam. 
Now listen, all these things, these corner orders, and say, listen, did you ever stop to just just think just for a few minutes. Now, if you're going to waste all your time every Sunday or every month or every year and you don't eat nothing but, uh, say, the Lord's Supper or the Passover feast, right? Say, boy, when you going to, say, boy, when you going to get around to place where you eat the Feast of Pentecost, when you going to get around to the place where you can eat the Feast of Tabernacles, when you going to get, when you going to, when you go eat the feast of unleavened bread, the devil ain't doing nothing else. That's what's wrong out there everywhere. That's exactly what's wrong out there. A carnal mind and a satanic spirit. See how that go? Mm -hmm. Incarnated in a physical body. You got me? Mm -hmm. So it says a, a carnal mind and a satanic spirit. Right? Incarnated. That's what's a possibly played here, right? Incarnated, right? Mm -hmm. In these, in these, uh, 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 in these, uh, uh, in these, uh, uh, ministers, all right? Mm -hmm. Popes, you got me? Bishops, reverends, pastors, right? Imams, you got me? Priests, you got me? Sensei, you got me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right? That's what he said. A carnal mind, a satanic spirit incarnated in a physical body running around here telling you uh, Jesus said for us to take to take and eat. He said, don't touch, don't taste, don't handle. If you do, you will die. The devil said, no, he said for us to do it. We'll keep we'll keep all of them. Give me two real quick ones. Third chapter of Exodus, I'll, I will be. It's what I'm after. I'm after this. Aya after Aya. Elohim said, now wait a minute. So we don't. So 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 they're they're putting these things down. Where are you reading that third chapter of Exodus, Exodus three and fourteen? Now since you're writing, uh, write this down, Isaiah fourteen and fourteen. Now you got it on the paper. So now look look at, at me, and she'll read, and you'll know now what you got. Now follow me, please. So now he's referring to, we're going to give a pictorial illustration. We try to give as much as we can the pictorial illustration to go on with the verbal, what we're reading, is that right? Right. To match up. So now he says he wants them to read Exodus 3 and 14, mm -hmm. which is on this, which is on this plate here, is on a spiritual being, is that right? Right. It's on Yahshua the Messiah or Yahweh, you got me? Mm -hmm. All right? It says life, spirit, Yahweh, 888, soul, Elohim, I will be what I will to be, Exodus 3 and 14. You got me, body of Yahshua. You see, I go to so the body of Yahshua. You got me? Yes. Not a physical body, spirit body. You got me? Yes. It says Aya, Asha, Aya, meaning I will be what I will to be. I'll be a revelation. I'll also be a delusion. You got me? Mm -hmm. You see how I go? Yes. I mean, delusion here, revelation here. Life here, death here. Now we're coming over here. You also must read Isaiah 14 and 14, which we have wrote on here also, right? right. Exodus 3 and 14 here, Isaiah 14 and 14 here. Is that right? right? So we got one speaking here, another one speaking here, right? Is that right? right. But we must keep in mind, by revelation now, what we, Yahweh had elevated to, who is Yahweh's having, Yahweh's putting the words. Right? Mm -hmm. In whoever's speaking. You got me? Right. You understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. All right. So, Ayah air means I will be what I will to be, right? So, you got death over here. Satan, it said date, it said death, father of lies, Satan, loose for the devil. I will be like the Most High. Over here it says, I will be what I will to be. Is that right? That's right. All right. Son of perdition. You got me? Mm -hmm. See? And diviners, false prophets. Down here it says witnesses, law of prophets. You understand? Yes. All right. So it's referring to is this six six six, iniquity. You see how I, you see how I go? Mm -hmm. So he says. He says now Exodus three and fourteen. Now since you're writing, write this down Isaiah fourteen and fourteen. Now you got it down on the paper. So now look, look up at me and sure read and you'll know. Now what you got? Elohim said to Moses. All right. Mm -hmm. On just right here. 
says, Ai, Asher, Ai, and he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be, listen, I will be, I will be, see, has sent me unto you, right? Mm -hmm. Read on, and Elohim said, Moreover to Moses, uh huh, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, right? Mm hmm. Yahweh, the Elohim of your father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations, right? Mm -hmm. He said, now let's cut it up real short, because I know the time just about expired. Now he said, I will be, has sent me, Aya Asher Aya, right? Mm -hmm. You will be what, huh? You got it down there? I will be what I will to be, right? Mm -hmm. He said, I will be, that's what, that's what, I wanted to hear. Now this is, now this is Yahweh talking. I will be what I want to be. Remember, you got, we got both of these boys together, right? Right. Talking about got both these boys together, right? Mm -hmm. We got both of these boys together now. See, he just be whatever he wills to be. Now he says, I will ascend above the heights of the heaven. Now this one, this one, this one talking now, right? Mm -hmm. I will, I will ascend above. The heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Mm -hmm. I will be like the Most High. I will be like Him. I want to be like. Confound this. Yahweh said, I will be what I will to be. The devil said, I'm going to be like Him. See? Everything that. Now that's. Now that's them two boys I'm telling you about all the time. And this deception is going on all the time. See, this, this deception is going on all the time, right? Mm -hmm. I will be what I will to be, see. I will be like the Most High, Leviticus 16 and 2, and hold the place and finish, then will finish reading. And Yahweh said to Moses, that's Leviticus 16 and 2 now, just follow me. He says, you got that down? All right, now I want to I wanna point, pinpoint it. See, Yahweh said to Moses, I heard the bell. Now we up here in Leviticus 16 to 2, referring to the, uh, the most holy place in the tabernacle pattern, right? Okay. He says, Speak unto Aaron, thy brother, that he come not at all times to the most holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, right? Mercy seat here, which is upon the ark, that he died not, that he died not. See, we keep on telling you about that dying business, all right? Read. For I will, for I will appear. In the cloud, well, listen. I will appear in the cloud above the mercy seat. Now we got it. Now we got him pinpointed. Now here's what I'm. Here's what I mean pinpointing. See, this is a. This is what I'm talking about. You tell your brother Aaron, don't he, don't come in here in the second veil or to the most holy place, was a typical of going into heaven, a third heaven, right? Because I will dwell above the cloud. For I will dwell above in the cloud. Now I'm pinpointing said, I will appear in the cloud. Now here you're reading about Satan, all right. I will ascend above the heights. See, Satan said, I will ascend above the heights, right? Mm -hmm. See, in the cloud here, Satan said he, he, he will appear or he yeah, he will ascend above the Yahweh. See how I go? Mm -hmm. Above the heights of the cloud. Now you see that that idiot. Now Yahweh said, "I will appear in the cloud." See, mm -hmm. right? Satan says, "I ain't gonna be satisfied with that. I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm going up on above that." See, see, he's a liar. Anyway, you you make him and look. Yahweh made him slip like that too. See how I go? He went on up above the cloud. Is that what he said? All right, read on. I will be like the Most High. See, see back to here, right? I'll be like the Most High, right? That's his conversation, right? Mm -hmm. I'll be like the Most High. I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry. The bell rung. Yet, he said, Yet thou shalt be brought down to the grave, to the size of the pit. They that, now, wait a minute, that's enough. Now, second chapter of Thess second Thessalonians. Let no man deceive you by any means. Now, look. Don't let no man deceive you by any means. But look, I want to give you this picture. See this here? See the Ark of the Covenant? It's got some rings running through it. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because you, you can look. 
Right, that's why when they was carrying the Ark of the Covenant around, the mm-hmm. children of Israel, right? They had to, you know, to two rings on the side, like like two rings, right? And carrying it, you, mm-hmm. like, you know, carrying it, you know, like they carried a casket around. Mm-hmm. The two sides had the two things, two rods going through the, through the holes, through the rings, right? Mm-hmm. He said, it's got some running, it got some rings running through here, uh, running through it. Now, the reason why I'm telling you is because you can look right on the silver screen and see the little bags that's sitting up there. Now, they wasn't supposed to touch that, right? If you put your hand on the ark, you'll fall dead right then. That's right. And to show you, these cherub, these cherub of glory on each side of it, two cherub of glory, two archangels right here, mm-hmm. cherub of glory, and Yahweh dwelling between the, the wings of the cherubs right here, and Yahweh dwelling in the cloud. Now, here comes along that old uh, hypocritical bastard over Yahweh in the Vatican. You see them, you see them, you see kid carrying them around? Yeah, yeah. It's a like tennis spirit incarnated in the Pope. So I go, mm-hmm. now you got a Pope mobile, but he, well, he, 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 you're going to be up higher right. I mean, above the crowd. So I go, right. it's a like tennis spirit. Mm-hmm. That's a type, though. You understand what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? He says, um, now here comes along that hypocritical bastard over yonder in the Vatican, talking about the Pope of Rome, right? Riding in a sedalia, a sedalia uh, uh, guest, guest to, guest of Toria. Gesta Toria, somebody carrying him around. He and he's an ig- and he and he's as ignorant as everybody else. Yeah, that old bastard. I'm I'm angry with him too. Now, what's he's done? You you seen what he said there in Isaiah? He said I will have sent above, right? Mm-hmm. The cloud. Now Paul's now Paul's after him now. Let no man deceive you by any means. Don't let nobody deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except they come and fall away, and that man of sin be revealed. That's sort of perdition, right? That you have right here, back to here, right? Mm-hmm. See? Same one, son of perdition, right? He called the devil, the dragon, right? Satan. You know what I'm saying? All whole a whole lot of names, right? Right. He, he won't got many names. Not Yahweh. Shall I go? Right. Shall I go? Mm-hmm. Is that clear? He said, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called. Now you read about he's going to go way up above the clouds. He's going to go way up above the cloud, right? <laughs> and he said, the cloud mm-hmm. symbolizes Yahweh, or eternity, right? Same one right here. Same thing, right? Mm-hmm. You can't get outside, but he said he can. He said he can, right? right. It's like Yahweh made him talk like that, right? He said, now, who opposes and, and exalted himself above all that is called, now you read about he's going to go way up above the cloud, and you, you understand that's where Paul's getting this stuff at, at his writing about it. Rip, are you following? Yes, sir. Now, they don't want me to say nothing. They want me to. Sh- they want to shoot me. They call me a heretic. And every one of them Baptist, and every one of them, and every one of our Baptist brethren, and our Methodist brethren. And our Roman Catholic brethren, I'm the worst fellow there is around. You don't find nothing agreeing with me. How are you going to agree with me, you and your little corner of mine? And then you out there playing church and kicking up your heels in some building down here on the corner. Here I say, mm-hmm. I go. You see what I'm talking about? It said, Dr. Kelly walks off the floor. The audience applauds. If you got anything out this, uh, this day's uh, transcript and title of Mystery of Iniquity, colon, Revelation 12 chapter, all praise and glory and honor belongs to Yahshua, Messiah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Any questions or comments? Uh, praise go to Yahshua, Messiah, hallelujah. All right. The time there. Huh? Great. All right. Praise Yah's Messiah for this day's uh, transcript. Um, that will include another uh, lecture given by the Omaha class, College Beings here in Omaha, Nebraska. Yes. Um, I'd like to say those that are viewing this class video for the very first time, if you have any questions concerning how this establishment or how this, I would say, how this, um, 
how this school has got established, how it came with the being. You can go to our official website of the entire organization. You can go to www.idmr.net and get the history and the background in, in it, uh, for yourself, all right? And also, um, we hold class here in Omaha, Nebraska on Wednesdays and Fridays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And on Sunday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And for, um, to, uh, if you'd like to attend a class here, give us an email, all right? Uh, uh, a detailed email concerning the day and the time you'd like to attend a class here. Um, you can contact us on our email address. You can contact, contact us by email. Go to uh, Yahshua47 at gmail.com. Once again, Yahshua spelled Y-A-H-S-H-U-A 47 at gmail.com. Leave a detailed message concerning the day and time like to attend a class here. And uh, uh, we'll be uh, so glad to have you as our guest. Also, for further contact information, you can, you can contact us by, 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 by voicemail, by dialing for Dr. Stefan Williams, dial area code 402-973-897. Or for Dr. Rapunzel Williams, area code 402-609-6588. Leave a detailed voicemail concerning the day and time you like to attend a class here. And uh, may Yahweh bless you. Also, we upload videos of our class. After every class, we upload our videos on YouTube. Search for the YouTube search and put in IDMR Omaha. And um, ask Yashima to lead and direct, lead and direct, lead and, direct and guide you to the video they already have for you to uh, watch, all right? And also, like to promote other classes. Other IDMR classes that upload their videos after their classes also. So, like I said, you go to you go to YouTube search, you put an IDMR, all right, IDMR for Oceanside, IDMR Syracuse, IDMR Spanish Town Jamaica, IDMR Arkport, IDMR Ontario, IDMR Southfield, IDMR Springfield. IDMR Albuquerque, New Mexico, IDMR Northside, Chicago, IDMR Tampa, Florida, IDMR Meridian, IDMR Lansing, Michigan. Also, um, there's another one I'd like to promote, but you do not put IDMR in front of this class name. You do go to YouTube search, put in Memphis side class. All right, I'd like to say, in every class that I just promoted, he asked Yashima Sai to lead and direct and guide you to what uh, class that he wants you to watch their class videos. Uh, may Yashima Sai bless your soul. Also, I'd like to promote five websites. The first website is entitled AYAASHERAYA.org. AYA is spelled A Y A H. You put a space for Asher, A S H E R. Put another space for AYA, A Y A H. Dot org, AI, Asher, AI. The second one is www.plim.org. Once again, www.plim.org. The third one is www.eliyah.com. Once again, www.eliyah.com. The fourth one is Yashu was given glory. Yashu was spelled Y A H. S H U A N S, giving glory. Yahshua was giving glory. And the fifth one was entitled All Things Scripture. And last but not least, I like to promote a Meridian Mississippi class. They have what they call live conference calls. And to engage in their live conference calls, you dial 1 712 770 4700. Put in your phone 676 123 hashtag. And also, for pre-recorded conference calls, you dial 1-712-770-4709. Put in your phone, 676-123, hashtag. And like, like I always say, may Yash Messiah bless your soul. Hallelujah. Let us all stand for the doxology. And a doxology can be found in the King James Version of your Bible in the book of Jude, spelled J-U-D-E, verse 24 and verse 25. In the book, in the... Uh, in, in the Holy Name version of the Bible, the Holy Name Bible, you, you, you find it in the book of Judah, spelled J-U-D-E-H, same verses, eight, uh, same verses, verse 24 and verse 25. 
now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you fall of the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim our Savior through Yahshua Messiah our sovereign belong in glory and majesty dominion and power both before all time now and ever as all say hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah.